Hey guys, I'm Sean from Scott Studio. So uh, it's been a while since I made an animation loop thingy. So let's go, let's go make one. And there's a ton of cool other videos in the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. You can also download the project files in my website at skylarglobal.com. So make sure you check it out. So I'm gonna start by adding a cube, shift A, cube, and press one in the numpad to go to the front view and N to open up my transform settings and in location 30 meters in the X axis and 12 in the Z. Now I'm gonna select it, shift D to duplicate it, change the Z location to 10 meters and X to about 35, tab in edit mode, Go to X-ray view with Alt Z. Select these two vertices and move them while pressing Control so that it snaps into the grid. And you, this one you can move as much as you want. And I'm gonna select this cube, Shift D, duplicate it. Change the X location to 10 meters and the Z to 1 meter. Duplicate it again with Shift D and place it over here like this. Shift D, duplicate again, place it over there while pressing Control. Now I'm gonna activate automatic keyframing and switch to the animation tab and I'm gonna make this tab a dope sheet and the bottom one over here is going to be my graph editor usually I would have a second monitor for my graph editor because you spend a lot of time in the graph editor if you are an animator so I'm gonna select the cube and move to the first frame and with I I'm gonna add a location keyframe and move to object transform in the graph editor and delete the y location because we won't be using that move to the 30th keyframe and make the x location 20 meters and also before adding keyframes make sure you go to edit preferences and in animation check whether you have your default interpolation to bezier all right now go to the 70th frame and change the x location to 10 meters and I'm gonna select these cubes and move them down while selecting control so that it snaps into the grid and I'm gonna delete the automatically generated keyframes now I can select the cube and make the Z location 1 meter so if you play the animation it kinda looks weird now so we're gonna adjust all that go back to the 30th frame and I'm gonna change the Z location to about 12 meters move to the 80th frame and change the Z location some to something like three meters and the uh, X to about eight something yeah something and something like that looks good move to the 90th keyframe and make it something like minus one meters and change the X location um, about seven point yeah this looks good now we can press the home key to zoom in or just zoom in with mouse wheel and get to the z location curve select this point over here and with s x zero i'm gonna scale it down and i'm gonna do the same thing to the other point as well if we play now it kind of looks okay but we can use a little bit more hang time so i'm gonna scale this point in the x axis like that and if we play back uh, yeah it looks kind of good a lot better than what it was now I'm gonna move to the 50th frame and uh, somewhere over here I'm gonna select the cube and pull it up in the Z axis like that select the curve in the graph editor and with SX0 I'm gonna scale it to 0 and select the curve point over here and scale it in the X axis a bit so that we have a smooth curve like that now if you play it looks like that now I'm gonna select these two. I'm actually gonna hide all these first the y location the rotation the scale and all of that and even the y location select the X location and the Z location and it's shift D uh, I'm gonna duplicate it and while pressing control I'm gonna move these curves and place it like that on the 90th frame so now if you play the animation you can see it bumps down I'm gonna make another duplication with shift D and place it in the bottom and if you play it now one two three we have three bounces but it looks a bit weird in the X location so I'm gonna select these ones and delete those keyframes and now we should have a smooth animation okay that looks good now I'm gonna move back to the first frame to add the rotation 
So we are only going to rotate this in the Y axis. So what I'm going to do is with I add just a rotation keyframe and delete the X and the Z rotations and move to the 30th frame. And uh, I guess there's nothing. We are not going to do anything there as well. So I'm just going to add another keyframe and yeah. So those two just came back. Okay, never mind. Moving back to the 50th frame and I'm going to add 45 degrees, uh, minus 45. And then there you go. So I accidentally added another keyframe on the 51st frame and I'm going to delete that in a moment. All right, now we're going to move to the 17th, 70th keyframe and I'm going to make it uh, 100, no, 90, 180, yeah, maybe 180. Minus 180, minus 180, and now play the animation. Oh, wait, I have to delete this. And now delete this. X, delete keyframe. Okay, why isn't it deleting? Delete keyframe and play the animation. There you go. So now what I'm going to do is add 40, minus 45 degrees to all these keyframes to get a rotation. And move 10 keyframes and over there minus 45. And there you go. And over there minus 45 again. And keep adding minus 45 until the last uh, step. All right. So what I'm going to do now is to rotate this lever. I'm going to select this cube and select the lever thing next and control P to set a parent. So now the cube is parented to the uh, lever. So what I'm going to do is add a keyframe in the 30th frame and rotate it minus for uh, the minus maybe 30 in the Y axis and you play it now looks like this so yeah that's it so I'm gonna play with the curve a bit in this one as well with s to scale to zero and there you go so now I'm gonna show you guys how I created those circle stuff so for that I'm gonna select the cube Control R, add a loop cut in the middle of the cube and delete all the other vertices and add a screw modifier. Now I'm going to object and set origin to 3D cursor and now I'm going to increase the steps to about 90 and apply the screw modifier and add a solidify modifier, increase the thickness and apply the solidify modifier. Select these two edges and S shift Z to scale it in the X and Y axis except the Z axis to get make it flat. So now I'm going to add a bevel modifier as well. So now to morph the cube into a sphere, I'm going to subdivide this eight times and go to the shape keys and add two shape keys. And now go to the mesh settings, mesh transform. To select to sphere and now if you move your mouse you can get a sphere so what I'm gonna do is right left click apply it now if you can see you can uh, add keyframes to the shape key to get an awesome result so yeah so that is that's it for this tutorial guys so I hope you guys enjoyed it and you can download the project file at scalarglobal.com and get a better idea of how the whole thing is set up if you want to so if you guys make this tutorial tag me on your work so i can see them maybe and leave some feedback as well so follow me on insta i'll be posting more of my work there before i upload tutorials and i have a lot of videos like this in my channel so you guys can check them out as well and i'll be making three videos a week mostly character modeling videos and animation loops like this so on mondays make sure you guys catch those animation loops and the rest of the week i'll be posting more character modeling videos so if you guys want to learn how 
I created this animation loop. You guys can click here. And if you guys want to create something like this, you guys can click the playlist over here. So thank you guys for watching this tutorial. If you guys liked it, leave a comment and subscribe to this channel. So thank you guys. See you in the next one. Peace.